In May 1946, six inmates attempted to escape Alcatraz Federal Penitentiary in San Francisco, California. The long-standing conflict and anger between the guards and the inmates exploded into the Battle of Alcatraz, which ultimately resulted in a forced compromise. Today, many modern prisons are modeled after the improvements made to Alcatraz after the battle. The earliest prisons in the United States were used for criminals awaiting their trial and punishment or release. In the early 1800s, the U.S. government started imprisoning criminals as punishment. Benjamin Rush, one of the authors of the Declaration of Independence, stated that the design of punishment should be to reform criminals, to prevent crime by fear of imprisonment, and to separate criminals from society. Rush's statement has come true for modern-day prisons. In 1775, Spanish Lieutenant Juan Manuel de Ayala sailed into San Francisco Bay on the San Carlos and named Alcatraz Island. In the early 1850s, with more than 100 cannons, Alcatraz became the most secure military fortress in the western U.S. In the late 1850s, Alcatraz Island became a prison, and in 1912, the inmates on the island completed the construction of the new Alcatraz Penitentiary for the U.S. Army. In 1933, Alcatraz was given to the U.S. Department of Justice for use by the Federal Bureau of Prisons in response to the crime of the post-depression era. Alcatraz's main cell house was made up of cell blocks A, B, C, and D. In D block, where the six ringleaders of the escape lived, the inmates had the least number of privileges. Former Alcatraz inmate Jim Quillen said, Alcatraz went far beyond a maximum security facility and became a prison where the sole purpose was to degrade, humiliate, and break the inmates physically mentally and spiritually if possible. In many, many cases, it was remarkably successful. He said that because they had no other hope, many inmates were willing to risk their lives for escape. Many Alcatraz inmates endured the inhumane punishments for breaking rules employed by Warden James Johnston, the warden in 1946. Many committed suicide or injured themselves to leave Alcatraz. One inmate, Henry Young, allegedly went insane from being locked in a cold, pitch black cell with no food for months. The inmates' constant anger at the guards exploded into one of California's most violent prison rebellions. Warden Johnston, who was held in high respect by fellow guards and wardens, argued that his strict rules and punishments were necessary to rehabilitate the inmates, eliminate escapes, and ensure submission to authority. Most of the inmates who planned the escape from Alcatraz in 1946 had a history of escaping other prisons. The six ringleaders were Joseph Kretzer, a violent leader, Bernard Coy, the sly architect who began planning the escape three years in advance, Marvin Hubbard, Miran Thompson, Clarence Carnes, the youngest participant, and Sam Shockley, the most controversial participant, whose mental illness and frequent hallucinations caused him to be violent towards the guards. The Battle of Alcatraz started as a plan for a mass escape led by Coy and Kretzer. On May 2, 1946, using a homemade bar spreader, Coy forced apart the bars to the gun gallery attacked the guard on duty, and stole a pistol and a rifle. Meanwhile, Hubbard knocked out Officer William Miller and took his key ring. However, Miller hid the important key to the island docks. The inmates unlocked almost all the cells in D-Block and released Kretzer, Carnes, and Shockley. Coy and Hubbard forced the four guards into cell number 403 in C-Block, and eventually, the inmates held hostage more than half of the guards on Alcatraz. When the guards realized Coy was armed, they sounded the alarm. This eliminated all possibilities of an escape, so Coy, Kretzer, and Hubbard decided to do as much damage as they could before they were killed. Suddenly, Kretzer started shooting into cell number 403. Johnston later said of Kretzer's shooting, The inmates couldn't get the key to the docks away from Miller. That's why they shot him. The rest they shot to get rid of witnesses. When Kretzer ordered Carnes to kill any surviving officers, Carnes told Kretzer they were all dead, even though they were not. Quillen, an inmate eyewitness, said of Carnes, when he saw the bloody mound of humanity Kretzer had created with his maniacal shootings, Carnes realized he was involved in a situation with men that he really did not know. Kretzer's shootings were most likely a result of his hatred for the prison and frustration at the failed escape. Quillen claimed that Carnes, Thompson, and Shockley decided they no longer wanted to be involved and locked themselves back in their cells. However, the officers and guards reported that the three inmates backed out when they realized they could not escape or win a fight and later denied any involvement. As soon as armed guards arrived, the Battle of Alcatraz began. Guard Harold Stites was the first to be killed. He was accidentally killed by a drunk officer, who was later fired but never charged with crime. Quillen said, This is a good example of the many men who wanted convict blood. Innocent or guilty, it was of no consequence. 
as long as they had a number and were incarcerated in D Block, the home of the incorrigibles. The guards moved outside to fire and throw tear gas bombs through the windows, but the inmates threw the bombs back before they could go off. On May 3rd, the guards drilled a hole in the roof to fire on and throw grenades at the inmates. Fully armed Marines and prison officials, along with James Bennett, the director of the Federal Bureau of Prisons, arrived at Alcatraz from almost every penitentiary in the U.S. On May 4th, the guards found the bodies of Coy, Kretzer, and Hubbard in the C-Block Utility Corridor. The three inmates had died fighting the way they had wanted. After the battle, the anger and bitterness between the guards and the inmates continued for many months. In an interview, Johnston lied to the press about details of the battle. He said that the guards had complete control over the cell block the entire time, but they did not enter the block until May 4th. Johnston also said that Stites was killed by inmates, not by his own men. By lying, Johnston kept alive Alcatraz's legacy of the best guards and security. None of the inmates escaped, but three were killed and one had a minor wound, and two guards were killed and 13 were wounded. In December 1946, Thompson, Shockley, and Carnes were tried and pronounced guilty. Thompson and Shockley were executed in the same Quentin gas chamber, and Carnes was sentenced to life. Quillen believed that Shockley did not conspire with the other six because the inmates knew he was not reliable due to his mental illness. However, Johnston argued that Shockley knew of the escape and participated in the shooting. Quillen said, I truly believe that Sam Shockley was a victim of the break, not a knowledgeable co-conspirator. I also believe that the U.S. government put to death by execution a man who was not only insane, but who was a victim of angered, frustrated, and revengeful people who won convict blood for the death and injuries sustained by their fellow workers during a tragic incident. The Alcatraz guards and the press could have quickly assumed that Shockley was involved with the escape plan because he was known to be dangerous and psychotic. After the battle, many improvements were made to Alcatraz. The gun cages were protected by bulletproof screens, intercoms were installed throughout the prison, and more officers were required to guard the inmates. The conflict in Alcatraz continued until it closed. The compromise between the guards and the inmates was forced and one-sided. The guards won the battle and approval in the eyes of the citizens, and the inmates lost the battle and their reputation as citizens. Alcatraz officially closed in May 1963 for financial reasons. The last inmate to leave Alcatraz, Frank Weatherman, said, Alcatraz was never good for anybody. That statement became Alcatraz's legacy in the eyes of the inmates. Alcatraz became part of the National Park Service and opened to the public in 1973. Director James Bennett said, There will always be the need for specialized facilities for the desperados, the irredeemable, and the ruthless but Alcatraz and all that it had come to mean now belong, we may hope, to history. Alcatraz had served its purpose as a maximum security prison, and today, more than one million tourists visit Alcatraz per year. Some of Alcatraz's problems continue today. Though not all prison guards are violent toward inmates, there are many cases of inmate abuse that has led to lasting physical, psychological, and emotional pain. Since the Battle of 1946, penitentiaries have increased security procedures around inmates, Today, in maximum security prisons, inmates are isolated to prevent fights and collusion with other inmates and are heavily monitored by security cameras. ADX Florence, a maximum security prison in Florence, Colorado, is like Alcatraz in that it guards some of the most infamous criminals in the U.S., including terrorists like Terry Nichols and Ted Kaczynski. Inmates spend 14 to 23 hours a day in their cells and are given very little privileges, much like D-Block in Alcatraz. Because of the conflict and anger between the guards and the inmates, the attempted escape from Alcatraz in May 1946 and the following battle resulted in a one-sided compromise within Alcatraz. Today, many modern-day prisons are modeled after Alcatraz's improvements after the battle. Despite 36 attempted escapes, including the Battle of Alcatraz, Alcatraz remains one of the most infamous and inescapable prisons in America.